If you're looking to start a podcast and already have a podcast and you're looking for an affordable podcasting hosting site, Podbeam is your number one choice. Podbeam offers statistics with in-depth analytics to manage your podcast needs. Use the promo code podbeam.com slash PB sign up and get a free month off. That's podbeam.com slash PB sign up to get a free month off and see why 1,500 episodes have been shared all over the world in the past 11 years with over 3,000 subscribers that have chose Podbeam as their number one hosting site. Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to the Everest Lee Show. Welcome to the Ever Lee Show podcast on this Tuesday night. I want to give a shout out to everyone that follows me on social media and, of course, Podcast City Network, the official host of the Ever Lee Show podcast. Tonight, returning to the podcast, he is the gold rush, Solomon Stone. How you doing there tonight, Solomon? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? No, pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm just... Uh, I've been about three or four days. I was telling you before we went live, about three or four days without a phone. I just want to show this to everyone here. This is what happens when uh, your phone drops calls and you can't, your service sucks, basically. This is what happens. Your phone gets smashed. (laughs) It is, I can't do nothing on it. It rings and stuff. I can't even just, I mean, just nothing. You know, this is what happens when you get pissed off with your phone there. You smash the son of a bitch <laughs> when the service call drops. <laughs> That's why I have a shoe box full of about 15 phones right now. Yeah. You think I could borrow one? <laughs> but dude, honestly, I don't even know if there might be maybe one or two in there. Yeah. It's... What what kind you get there? Little flip phones or old or the old ones? Yeah. Or no, they're all like you know older, not older, older, but I'd say good, a good, a five to seven years worth of cell phones there. So they're all regular like Android phones, but probably not the best. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a droid. I'm a droid person. I will admit that I am a droid Android person. I've never been a, never been a iPhone person. So, <laughs> no way. iPhone sucks. iPhone sucks. It does. It does suck. <laughs> Shout yeah, out to they literally make you buy iPhones every single year on purpose, dude. Yeah, that's how they get your money, man. That's that's basically exactly. how how they get your money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's how they basically get your money there. Shout out to David C. Russell, Death Match Russell Podcast. How you doing, David? And thanks for tuning in here tonight on this live stream on twitch.tv slash podcasting network and right here on the Everett Lee Show Facebook page. And uh, yeah, droids are just I've been a droid person, man. That's that's all I've been. I've been a droid. I've enjoyed using droid phones that's what i've had from the beginning i did mess around with the iphone at one point but i just i just didn't like it i just it didn't suit my needs it just didn't suit what i needed to use it for no pretty much use iphone you're a weirdo so (laughs) so how long how long have you had uh or how long you've been a droid person since the beginning god yeah since the beginning man yeah. The first cell phone I ever had was one of those Nokia stupid clip-on like phones that you could put like a custom face on it, uh-huh. and that was probably in like seventh grade, maybe eighth. Okay. And I thought it was the coolest damn thing ever. <laughs> nice, yeah. I I've had everything from the old old Nokia phone. I think it is Nokia to everything from a slide up phone like the matrix like like uh neo had but i still have those phones i still have my old flip phone i still have my th- four phones or five phones i've had 
since I don't even know how long. Two thousand five, I think, or six, something like that. But um, funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing what cell phones what what you can do with them nowadays, and especially oh, especially like at wrestling events because you capture everything. You capture everything with the cell phone, but. I think we. I've asked you this before. Does it bother you when you're you're in the ring and you're putting on a match, and you got that one person that's staring at their phone the whole damn time while you're trying to put on a match? Oh yeah, yeah. Bothers the shit out of me. How do you deal with that? Uh, I don't know, but next time I see it, that phone is going to end up in my shoebox full of the other phones that I have busted. <laughs> Pretty much, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm sick and tired of it. Yeah. I would I would say I would I'd be pretty much sick and tired of it too there because um having having the having a cell phone there and using it to take a couple pictures here and there for when you're at a wrestling event. That's great. That's great though, but don't watch the whole damn match through your phone. That aggravates me sometimes. I, I did that for a while there and I sat sat there after I got home after watching the NXT when the NXT came to Daytona. I sat there and I was going through the pictures and I realized to myself, I said, you know what? I just watched this whole damn match in front of me through a freaking phone. So I may take a picture here or there and that's about it. Other than that, I just sit down or like I did a couple weeks ago, I went to go wrestle here in Daytona and I didn't even pull out my phone once to take a picture I sat there and enjoyed the whole match the whole event loved it and then I went home I went home and that, that that's about it that's about <laughs> all, all I did I mean I didn't I've got to the point where I don't even want to take pictures don't even feel take, like taking pictures when I'm at a wrestling event depending on who I see there just yeah. who I see so that's that's basically just all all I do but I know it must be a pain in the ass for you when you're on there giving it your all, and then all of a sudden you got that one person there. You can't make them look up from their phone just once. Nope. Too busy swiping on that Tinder. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to put it there. That definitely is a pretty good way to put it there. But um, what's uh, since last time I talked with you, you've had some, you had two or three events that kind of came up. What, what, um, here lately, what, uh, what do you got coming up here that, uh, fans should know that they should be aware of with you? Yeah, I got, um, a couple things going on this month. Uh, we'll start off March 14th in Indiana for Honored Pro Wrestling. It's going to be the tag team of myself and Hyena Hagen as the Savage Society, we're going to take on the Gingers. Um, and then, I believe the following week, Friday, will be for Rising Action Wrestling. And that's going to be in Detroit. And I take on Freedom Ramsey. Let's, I have another one. Um, I'll have to pull it up. I just got the info on that today. So, <clears throat> But that's right off the top of my head. Those are the first two coming up. So it should be a good time. Nice, nice. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. And again, I love your social media. How you put a lot of stuff out there, and you don't hold anything back. You speak your mind, and you do put out events that you have coming up and everything. You let you inform people. You're oh, yeah. very informant on social media. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Very. And it's always always good. It's always good to be informant. Gotta yourself, man. Yeah, you have to. You have to. You're you're a worker in the business, and you got to you got to you got to get yourself out there. And I love the promos. Again, I love the promos and everything that you do put out there on social media. I love it. Well, thank you. You're I welcome. take pride in my promos. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. Just come eventually, man. Talk crap and sell your match, and you're good to go. Yep. It's usually how usually how it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So have have you seen any wrestling lately, man? Have have you seen anything yeah. interesting? Yeah, I mean, I'm 
God, what was just on? Um, AEW was just on. I see. I didn't catch that completely live or anything. I watched. I pretty much watched it after, right after one on it off air. Watched some of that. That was a pretty good show. Um, of course, Super Showdown, which we all know how that went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I mean, it was uh, uh, it was meh. Nothing yeah. too special. Yeah. Now, last week, last week I had Chris Carnage. He returned on here on the podcast, and we did a quick prediction show of Thurs- for thir- that Thursday's Super Showdown. And yeah. pretty much after that, after that day, that evening, I got a hold of Chris. I said, "Chris, man, I said we pretty much got about most of the stuff wrong on this card." <laughs> For our predictions <laughs> I said we didn't predict Undertaker showing up and winning that little uh, tournament they had there taking AJ Styles out at the end we didn't expect that didn't expect Goldberg to win a universal championship and um, we one thing that we got right was John Morrison and the Miz winning the Smackdown tag team titles that's one thing that we yeah, got I saw that one coming yeah. definitely saw that one coming yeah yeah, because it's been it's been a, quite a while since New Day's held on to this title, so it was kind of yeah. good that they they got rid of them or they dropped them to yeah. them. But um, one thing that's coming up here, man, it seems like pay per views this for like this month is getting close. They're jamming everything together real quick because this Sunday we got Elimination Chamber pay per view that's coming up here this Sunday, and. Yeah. So far, the match card on this on this pay per view, there's probably about four matches that they've listed. And looking at the card there, I wanted to I wanted to ask you tonight, since I had I was having you come on, I wanted to give a get a quick prediction on what you think about these matches here. I want to start off the top of the list here. We have a women's elimination chamber match. We have Shayna Baszler versus Ruby Riot versus Natalia versus Sarah Logan versus Liv Morgan versus the the SmackDown or not SmackDown? Excuse me, the women's tag team champion Oscar, one half of the women's tag yeah. team champ Oscar, and the winner will face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's Championship. What do you think about the talent that's in this match, and who would you pick? to win this one Ooh, well i mean dude there's a lot of talent in that match for sure yes um definitely a lot well i mean it's obvious with that they're gonna have shana go over there like i don't see why they would not especially with everything that's been going on between her and becky um my pick will be shana as much as i would love to see the lovely Liv Morgan go over, but um, it's going to be Shayna for sure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with Shayna myself because they've they've already teased it enough that she's gonna she's a, in almost like in a feud right now with Becky. So I don't understand why they can't just skip right to it and make her number one contender and then just right. build it up to Thank mania, you. but. Yeah, just have her come out like Roman Reigns and say, I'm next, and boom, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But you want to you wanna do something with this pay-per-view, and oh, yeah. I don't know what WWE Creative is thinking about this, but pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the card looks super weak for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. It does. It, it does look weak, though, but... I mean, it's pretty much supposed to be the road to WrestleMania this year. So, yeah, why not just have, yeah, name Shane, Shayna, number one contender, and have her just build in the following weeks to Mania. But you got to pay per view and you got to promote it somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Pretty much. The next chamber match they, they, they've announced so far. Of this recording, I want to throw this out here real quick. Of this recording right now, Friday Night SmackDown, we have not seen it yet. We don't know if they've added anything to this card, but we're going by by on this Tuesday night on what has been given so far. But 
The second Elimination Chamber match is for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. You have the Usos versus Robert Roode, Dolph Ziggler versus Heavy Machinery versus Lucha House Party versus The New Day versus the champions John Morrison and The Miz. Huh. That's well. A, that's a tongue twister, ain't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucha House Party, I didn't even know they were still a thing. When's the last time they even been on TV? I, I don't know, man. I have no idea. I've not not really kept up too much with it. <laughs> so I didn't even know they were still a thing myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um God, I don't even know. I would I think Morris and Miz will retain for sure on that. Mm-hmm. I would have to, honestly, I would have to. I'd have to go with you too because I feel that Morrison and The Miz w- would retain, and I feel like they've got some a team like the probably the New Day getting a rematch at WrestleMania, or you got another team stepping up to the plate like the Usos. But I'm gonna have to go with New Day. Ended up going after Morrison and The Miz, but The Miz and Morrison retaining the SmackDown Tag Team titles in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's how I see it. I mean, the God, the Usos have won it how many times? <laughs> Quite a bit. I mean, I don't see them. They're just randomly throwing together heavy machinery. I'd like to see them win it eventually. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, I mean... That's really it, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, pretty much. We're pretty much on the same page here. Now, we have this handicap match, this three-on-one handicap match. You have the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Braun Strowman, the monster among men, defending his Intercontinental Championship in a three-on-one handicap match against Cesaro, Sami Zayn, and Shinsuke Nakamura. I I already know who I'm gonna pick, but let's. I want to hear your I thoughts mean, on this. So while they have this match, it's basically so it's a three you want three on one. So if Sammy pins Braun, he's the champion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, dude, honestly, I see Braun maybe retaining, but dude. For the love of God, give Cesaro a freaking push. Ooh. I would love to see, you know, him win some kind of gold and keep it and have some momentum going on for, for once, you know. But right. I don't know. I see Braun Strowman keeping this. Okay. Intercontinental too. I do I do like your pick there, Cesaro. I'd like to see him win that and break away from Sami Zayn. It should get Nakamura, though, but... Oh, they, yeah, but they they pretty much they have to stick them with someone, and they've sticking them with the with the two people who get the most heat on Friday Night SmackDown, which is Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura. But I I pretty much yeah see Braun holding on to this Intercontinental Championship until something happens at Mania. Rumor is maybe yeah. a multi man match, maybe a ladder match. I don't know, but I, I, I look up. What's that? I would definitely like to see that. Yeah. I pretty much I pretty much see I pretty much see Braun holding on to this title here. And now we have the Raw tag team title match. You have Murph you have Murphy and Seth Rollins versus the Street Prophet Prophets, the new Raw tag team champions. Which was a surprise Monday that the Street Prophets won. I was shocked, man. Yeah. I was shocked. That Me I, too. That was a new surprise. Yeah, that 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 was a surprise. When they won the titles, I was like, God dang. But thanks to Kevin Owens, man. Thanks to Kevin Owens. Right. <laughs> that was so great. You know, hit that stutter. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah, that. That was a nice surprise, dude. And that entire Brooklyn crowd was hot mm-hmm. for the whole show, they which were. made it much better. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did make it much better there. Um, I see 
Ah, uh, I don't know. I I'm thinking maybe Murphy and Rollins take those belts back. Okay. At the paper. At the pay per view. Yeah. Okay. I I pretty much I pretty much That's a tough one though, dude, because like it is. the thing that Rollins has with the Monday Night Messiah thing, like I don't know, I feel like he could break off and start doing his single stuff again. And I don't know. I mean you got AOP who are the you know, a legit tag team. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Yeah. But I see them reclaiming it. Okay. I'm thinking the same thing for the fact that Rollins and Murphy get the tag t- tag team titles back. And when they get the tag team titles back, it looks like Kevin Owens and a partner of his choosing will go after the Raw Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania. That's the way I'm looking at it. Maybe Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens going after the tag team titles at WrestleMania. And here at Elimination Chamber, Rollins and Murphy getting the belts back, but it kind of kills the Street Profits, man. Maybe, maybe yeah, if the I know. Yeah, I like to see Street Profits have a good run with these titles because they were so great, and I loved them in the NXT. Oh, yeah. That's that's the only thing. Yeah, I mean, the crowd's definitely behind them. You know, that would be nice to definitely see them keep the mm-hmm. momentum going. Through. Yeah. Yeah, that that definitely would that would definitely would be good if they if they got that momentum behind them and they kept these kept the tag team titles. So, but yeah, I'm gonna pretty much we're on the same page on these four four matches for the elimination chamber pay per view here. I mean, just it's it seems like it's just a run through with this pay per view. It's just oh, let's yeah. throw these matches together. Let's sell some tickets, run through, and try to get to WrestleMania real quick. That's exactly. Basically, it's just there's no nothing really behind this except continuations or stories that and they've talked about that is coming out of Super Showdown or the Royal Rumble. Because WrestleMania, the only the only there's only like a couple matches that I'm interested in seeing for this year WrestleMania. That's the uh WWE championship match with Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar and Randy oh. Orton versus Edge. Those are the two matches yeah. I'm looking forward to. Those two for sure is what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I'm pretty much But dude, I've been waiting for McIntyre. I've been waiting for this day for a long time with McIntyre. Oh yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people have. He's he's one of the guys that he he came into the company young. His ego got big. He got set back there for a while because for there for there for the longest time you thought this guy was gonna be like a really big main eventer. And then when his ego got big, he got pushed down. And then he ended up before he got fired, he was doing the stuff with Slater and Jinder Mahal doing the three and B. And then yeah. he was gone and then he left and got did his thing around the world and came back and just he's more rounded as a performer now. And my my wife my wife seen the footage of him back when he was young compared to now i said uh what do you think of drew back then to compare to now and she's like i like how he looks now i was like oh okay. yeah <laughs> i was like okay. i was like yeah he's he's just a well round performer i mean he's just he pretty much all the three mbs won gold and he needs to get some gold more, like top gold yeah he's yeah. the next yeah, it, it's it's got to happen. Yeah, it pretty much is. But I'm just, I I'm looking forward to see what they do in this. Let me let me ask you this here: out of the elimination chamber matches here that's listed, who do you look to have a Kofi Kingston breakout moment? Who do you look at? Because remember last year with him breaking out big at the Elimination Chamber and it led to him yeah. having that match with Dan and Bryan. Who would you look at which chamber match and who would you look at to be like having that breakout Kofi mania like following going into WrestleMania? 
Um, so we have the so the women's and the tag matches are the only actual chamber matches now, right? So far, yeah, yeah. Good, dude. They advertised the SmackDown for um, for the Universal title. They advertised it, but now it's gone, obviously, because of Roman accepted. So, mm-hmm. um, and they're not going to have that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, out of all of those, or both of those chamber matches, I mean, I'd have to say Shayna for sure. Okay. I mean, not not on that Kofi, you know, fans behind them type of uh, breakout, but she's going to show pretty much everyone how badass she is and probably take that title off of Becky at Mania. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I think she will. I would be surprised if Liv Morgan broke out with a Kofi, Kofi Kingston moment and the crowd gets behind her. I would, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened there. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened there, if she, if she had one of those moments there, like Kofi had last year. I mean, this, this run, this run that she has going on now, it's a lot better than what she was doing before. Fans seem to be behind her and stuff like that too. She's got a great look. Uh huh. So, yeah, yeah, that's 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 definitely definitely for sure right there. She does have a better look and people. People's digging her, man. People is people's freaking digging her. They they love this run, and yeah, definitely, definitely. Shayna Baszler and would be your pick, and my pick would be Liv Morgan. But dude, if you think about it, Shayna's pretty much, dude. She's taking over what Ronda was doing with her. Yeah, with uh Becky for sure. Yeah. They they usually push the reset button after Mania for feuds and everything because a lot of stuff ends up building up for a whole year or right around R- Royal Rumble and then it dissolves at Mania and then the night after Mania on Raw you see a lot of crazy stuff happen. I look at Baszler capturing the women Raw Women's Championship and then the night after Ronda comes back and gets in a feud with Shayna. Ooh, that would be sweet. Yeah. That would that would be great. That'd be great, and um, they'd have a few there. But who? I I think I I think ba- because at that moment there, here here's something. Think about this, because Shane Shane is heel. She's playing that yeah. heel. At that moment where Rhonda comes back, if the crowd, if the crowd goes with it on the way they play it out. Have Ronda come back, heal, and knock out Shayna and attack her, and then basically build. You can flip Shayna face and see how she carries that momentum with with the crowd, because she does good as yeah. a heel. I like to see her carry the crowd as a face and see how that happens. You know, me too. I think, dude, I think that would that would definitely work. Uh huh. That would be something right there after Mania there. <laughs> Ronda comes back. Hey, congratulate. You know, hey, give me a hug. And all of a sudden, boom, knocks her out, yep. puts her in an arm bar. And then just, yeah, that would be something right there, though. But the crowd could be basically cheering Ronda on. And then, you know, they they may just stick with what they have. But who knows? But, who knows what the creative of this, yeah, you know? Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, but man, pretty pretty good discussion tonight. Um, I know uh, you got some stuff going on, and you want to keep this short and uh, short and sweet tonight. But um, our time is pretty much come and gone. So before man, you're me off already, what? The damn, you're kicking me off already. <laughs> I'm just going. I'm going by what you what you're saying. I know. I, I'm just. I'm just going by what my guests wanted tonight. You know, I'm accommodating you tonight. There, I'm basically. I'm basically uh, doing what Damien Saint does for you. I'm accommodating your needs tonight. Right. Damien Saint is he. You know, he definitely accommodates the needs of the Gold Rush. He takes care of his client very well. Yes. So the only thing you're really missing right now is uh, the bowl of green M&Ms. 
but other than that, you're good, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. But as requ- requested by you tonight, I decided that you wanted to keep this short and sweet. Come on. Promote the upcoming events that you have coming up and also just um, talk briefly with me right here on this Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and pretty good, pretty good discussion. But going to have to get you back on again in the future oh, yeah. when, when you have more time. Yeah. You have to get some of this aftermath of everything going on for sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do another review. How about that? We'll do a review on everything going on soon. For for Elimination Chamber? Yeah, Just... we can do that. Follow up with the Mania. You name it. I'm cool with it. Okay, yeah. We'll we'll do something, get you back on, and we'll talk about Elimination Chamber, talk about Mania. That'd be great. Definitely, definitely. We'll 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 talk we'll talk out um off air more about that. <laughs> Perfect. Nice, nice. But I want to thank you for coming on tonight and uh coming on and talking about upcoming events and the Elimination Chamber pay per view with me and where can people find you on social media and keep up with you at? Well, on Facebook you can find me under the Gold Rush eighty three. Twitter, Jim Tan Wrestling, Instagram, Solomon Stone 22. And also, you can shop for my merchandise on my Pro Wrestling Tees store at prowrestlingtees.com slash the gold rush. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. And before, before I do close, I have a couple announcements I, I do want to make. If you haven't heard and you've been following Podcast C Network, be sure to check out March 7th, this Saturday, March 7th at City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida for the Podcast C Network two-year anniversary show with hometown hero Seven Kingdoms and with opening bands Thicket and Render Abstract. So be sure to attend City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida, on Saturday, March 7th for the Podcast C Network's two-year anniversary. the Everything starts at 5 p.m. with live interviews with all the bands mentioned and the show and concerts will kick off at 8 p.m. And, of course, we'll have the return of draft day with myself, Chris Carnage, and possibly Seven Kingdoms. Some members of uh, Seven Kingdoms, so you're just going to have to show up and see all the madness that happens and next week on March 10th Tuesday night March 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern 6 p.m. Pacific I'll have none other than full-time boss Christian Ross on you've seen him on uh, this past week's death mattress podcast well the full-time boss will grace his presence right here on the Everett Lee show next Tuesday Right here on twitch.tv slash podcast network and over on facebook.com slash the Everett Lee. And be sure to follow Podcast C Network, your top source for independent podcasting around podcast.net. Follow them on Facebook, Podcast C Network, and on Twitter at Podcast C Net. Follow them, subscribe over on YouTube, Podcast C Network, and right here on Twitch, Podcast C Network. More to Everett Lee Show. Over on Facebook.com slash the Everett Lee, Twitter, the at the Everett Lower Score Lee, Instagram, Everett Lee Show, and for audio portion of this podcast, previous release podcast, head over to Everett Lee Show on YouTube, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, Google Play, and of course Podbeam. And if you want to start a podcast and you're looking for a platform to use it to host your podcast, Podbeam will be your number one choice. Head over to podbeam.com slash PB sign up and get a free month off. And that is it for the Every Lee Show podcast. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to this podcast. And have a good night. <laughs>